In this lesson, we're going to talk about perpendicular bisectors. So a perpendicular bisector, if you think about what that means, the word perpendicular means you form right angles. Bisect means to cut into two congruent parts. So perpendicular means forms right angles. And bisector means cut into two congruent parts. So a picture of a perpendicular bisector, if I had some segment, the first thing I'd have to do is find the middle of it so that I can cut it into two equal parts. So the middle would be the midpoint. So you find the midpoint, and then you need to draw a line, a ray, a segment that goes through that midpoint but is perpendicular to the original. So this right here, I'll make it a line, is going to be my perpendicular bisector because it's perpendicular, meaning all right angles, and it's bisecting the original segment. So the only things that can have perpendicular bisectors are going to be segments because they have to have endpoints, but the actual thing that's doing the bisecting and is perpendicular can be a line that can keep going, it could be another segment, it could also be a ray, so part of a line, so basically an arrow here. Um, so that's the idea of a perpendicular bisector. So let's go ahead and write down the definition here. So it's a line segment or ray that divides a segment into two congruent parts and is perpendicular to that segment. So for this first example, we're basically going to do what I just did up here with this picture, except we're going to do it on a graph so we can be act accurate while doing it. So starting off, we're trying to find the perpendicular bisector. So start by plotting your points. So we have 1, 5. So we're going to label that. So that's A. And then B is 7, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I want to find the perpendicular bisector of this. So the first thing you have to do is you have to figure out, well, where's the midpoint? So you're going to identify your midpoint because that's where the perpendicular bisector is going to go. So we already know how to do that. So you're just going to count that distance and then divide it by 2. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So instead of going over 6, I'm going to go over 3. So 1, 2, 3. So there's your middle. Remember, you could use midpoint formula if you want, but for this, it's just really easy just to count it out. And then from there, we have to be perpendicular to this line. So to go perpendicular passing through the midpoint, so that's going to be my second step, perpendicular and passes through midpoint. That's how you get the perpendicular bisector. So if this is horizontal, the vertical line that goes through this midpoint is going to always be perpendicular because horizontal lines, let me actually make this, let me use my straight edge here. Um, so vertical lines have an undefined slope and horizontal lines have a zero slope. So those are always perpendicular. They're always going to be perpendicular to each other. Even though they're not flipped and negated, that's kind of like the exception to the rule. Those will always be perpendicular. So when we write our equation, vertical lines, it passes through an x value of 1, 2, 3, 4. So x will always equal 4 on this, so that's going to be the equation. So the answer to the question is going to be x equals 4. That's the equation. We don't use y equals mx plus b here because it's a vertical line. And um, remember, y equals a number. That goes the opposite direction. That's horizontal. Vertical is x equals a number, so it always is opposite their axes. And the reason for that is because when I'm on this line, the value that changes is y, but the value that remains the same is x 
and x will always equal 4. So that's why it has to be x equals 4, not y equals 4. So that's when you have horizontal and vertical lines. Those are really easy because you can just count them and can draw your line. But the next question says, well, what happens if it's not a vertical or horizontal line? What happens if we have um, a diagonal line? So how could we do this? So no matter what, you always have to start by finding the midpoint because you have to know where is this perpendicular bisector going to go. So we know how to do that already because we can use the formula, we can use where we line up the coordinates, or you can count on a graph how to find midpoint. So no matter what, your first step is always going to be find the midpoint. And you have options for how you're going to do this. Totally your call. The second step, though, if you remember when I was up in this example here, I said, okay, well, it's horizontal, so I just know that vertical is going to make it um, perpendicular. But what happens if it's diagonal? So in order to know perpendicular, I have to be able to flip and negate the slope of whatever the original is. So my segment, if I find the slope of that, then I can flip and negate it, and that'll tell me what the slope of my perpendicular has to be. So your second step is going to be, we'll figure out the slope of the original. So find slope of original segment. And then from there, you're going to flip and negate that so that you know, well, what's the slope of my perpendicular? So find perpendicular slope. So basically steps two and three and the next step are all going to be um, part of what I did up here, which was the second step. I just made it perpendicular and passed it through the midpoint. So once I know the slope of my perpendicular bisector, then what I have to do is I have to make sure that that new slope passes through the midpoint. Because otherwise it won't be bisecting, it will just be perpendicular. So really this turns into one of those problems from the last section where you're going to have to find an equation that's perpendicular to a segment and passing through a specific point. That specific point has to be the midpoint. So you really have already done this, but now we're doing it with midpoint um, so that we're actually bisecting that segment. So my last step here, once you know the slope, you're going to use the midpoint and the perpendicular slope. to write your equation, to, I should say, graph and write your equation. So let's actually do that so you can kind of see, well, what does this really look like? What does it really mean? So start by graphing your points. So for example, two, we have three comma six. So one, two, three, and then up six. And I'm putting an A there. My B is 5, comma 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2. Make sure you're labeling as you go. So I connect these. So there's my segment. I need to find the perpendicular bisector. So step one, figure out where you're going to put this perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to put it in the middle. So I'm going to number my steps here to match the numbers of the steps that I just talked about up above. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the midpoint. Again, you have options for how you want to find the midpoint. Since I'm doing everything on the graph, I'm just going to use the graph to do the midpoint. You could use the formula or line up your coordinates, however you want to do it. So if I'm starting at A, I have to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 1, 2. So instead of going down 4 over 2, cut each of those in half. So it's going to be down 2 and then over 1. So that means I have my midpoint going back to the origin to figure out that point. is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the midpoint is 4, 4. So there's no work here because my work's on my graph, my counting. So there's your first step. Find the midpoint. That's where my perpendicular bisector has to go. So I know that the perpendicular bisector is going to look something like this because it's got to go through that midpoint and it's got to be perpendicular to the line segment AB. So now what I need to know, if I want to make it perpendicular to segment AB, well, you have to know the slope of AB. So step two, find the slope of AB, the slope of the original. 
So again, you have options how you want to find slope. You can do change in y's over change in x's. You can do your formula. You can count it. By counting the midpoint, I've already counted my slope. So that's the nice thing about doing these on a graph. So my slope of AB, if you look, I went down 4 over 2. So my rise was down 4. My run was right 2. If you went down, that's going to be a negative 4. If you went right, that's going to be a positive 2. If you reduce that, you get negative 2. So there's my slope. So again, I need to pass through this midpoint, and I need to be perpendicular to a line that has a slope of negative 2. So that means I need to flip and negate my negative 2 so that I know my perpendicular slope, because that's going to be the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So the perpendicular slope, remember we flip and negate for that. So think of this as it's really over 1. So you flip and negate that, you're going to get positive 1 over 2. So that's my slope. So that means I could start at the midpoint, and I can count up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. And you can already see that this line is looking perpendicular to the original. So backing, going backwards here, down 1 left 2, down 1 left 2. And I can just continue that process until I get my line. And then once you have enough points, go ahead and connect them with your straight edge. And you can see that this line looks perpendicular to my original, which is good because it should be if I've used the correct slope. And then it passes through the midpoint. So this right here is my equation. So there's two ways you could write the equation since I've already graphed it I could just look at my y-intercept so remember here's my y-intercept right here that equals 2 so if I look at the graph my equation is going to be using the y-intercept of 2 using my perpendicular slope you could write the equation so you could say the equation using y equals mx plus b you could just plug those two things in so I could do y equals my slope is 1 half my y-intercept is 2. So there's one way of getting the equation, actually graphing it and then doing it. Otherwise, I do that step 4. So using my midpoint, that's where I start because that's where my line has to go. In the perpendicular slope, we could plug into point slope form. So that might be more beneficial um, if you were doing these things algebraically or even if you had a situation where it's a multiple choice question and the answer is in point slope form. So you have to be able to do both. So really what I can do is if I take the midpoint, because that's the point that my line has to pass through, I use the perpendicular slope because it's the perpendicular bisector, I can take these and I can use my point slope form. So for your equation, you can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then you can plug in. So this is like your x1, y1. So I have y minus 4 equals 1 half for my slope. Make sure you use the perpendicular slope because otherwise you won't have the perpendicular bisector. And then x minus 4. Go ahead and distribute that 1 half. And then from there we have 1 half x, this becomes minus 2, because it's negative 4 divided by 2. Then just add the 4 over to both sides, and you get y equals 1 half x plus 2. Again, same answer, just one way is using point slope form, the other one's using the graph and finding the y-intercept and then writing it that way. But either way, for perpendicular bisectors, find the midpoint, so that's your starting place, that's where your line has to go through. Then you are going to find the slope of the original, flip and negate that so you know the slope of your perpendicular, and then go ahead from there and write your equation. Take your perpendicular slope, take your midpoint, that's how you're going to come up with the equation of the perpendicular bisector, or start at your midpoint and count your perpendicular slope until you get to the y-intercept and you'll get your equation um, using y equals mx plus b form if you do it that way. So that's the process. Remember that when you're doing a perpendicular bisector, it could have been, like I could have not made this a line. I could have stopped and said, oh, it's just a segment, or oh, it's going um, to the right forever, but not to the left. 
but normally we're going to just make them lines. Um, but just keep in mind, it doesn't necessarily have to be a line. But the thing that you're bisecting has to be a segment because it has to have endpoints so you can find the middle. So from here, I want you to try those check your understanding problems, um, and then we will discuss those when you come to class.